Happy Friday. Happy May 1st, everyone. Dr. Amy Ostick here with Health and Healing Direct Primary Care. We are wrapping up our seventh week here with Safer at Home orders in LA County. We have seen a sort of steady, uh, not really incline or decline in the number of cases, uh, fatalities, and then but also an increase in reported cases here in LA County as they really start to widen their testing protocols. Yesterday they announced that they would be willing to test not just patients with symptoms but asymptomatic individuals. So that's good news. So there are resources online if you go to the LA Department of Public Health or LA City. Um, there's a link there you can make an appointment and they're no longer triaging just to those who are symptomatic. You can now get a test if you're asymptomatic. It might take a while to get that test to get that appointment but it is now available, which is great news. Um, as we start to really understand the extent um, of this disease and how many folks really have it, even maybe asymptomatically or mildly symptomatic, we can really start to understand um, the morbidity and the mortality associated with this COVID-19. Today, I just wanted to pause. Um, a lot of thoughts circulating in my brain, a lot of things happening this week um, a lot of things I'd like to address, but I think most importantly, I wanted to address today um, really the mental health aspect in the sequelae this has kind of caused both the disease itself and the illness and the fear of the illness, but also the sequelae of the stay at home, safe for at home orders and the economic shutdown and the isolation that people have experienced and really how that's affect our mental health. In the very beginning, I spoke with my colleague, Betty Alkazian, about pre-TSD, about the fear and about um, certainly the isolationism, but it was sort of early. And I think we're a bit over the peak now, hopefully, with this particular outbreak um, here in LA County specifically. And now what we're going to have to, what we're sort of dealing with is the emotional impact. Um, people are getting, people are struggling emotionally, financially. People aren't reaching out uh, physically, medically. So maybe they're struggling also at home with medical issues because of the fear of going out. Um, we have two more weeks, hopefully, with LA County being safer at home before we start to move into the next phase. I'm not sure all those things are fluid and, ev and evolve, but I wanted to focus today on our mental game. And I'm taking a cue from my friend um, and local Valley guy, Jeff Supan, who gave me some great tips. He works with the Royals organization and he was giving a kind of a web conference to his pitchers about what can we do? We can't do much physically to change our surroundings and the situation we find ourselves, but we can focus on our mental game. So he gave me some tips and I thought it was a great idea. We certainly something we can all apply right now as we're sort of in the final stretch, we hope, before getting back into some semblance of real community life. Um, so he called it, you know, best performance. And in his world, it's throwing the best pitches. In our world, in my world, and for you all, it would be maybe being your best self, the version of your best self. And what does that mean? And we all think, I can't go to church, I can't go to school, I can't go to work, I can't work out. How am I able to be the best version of myself today? Um, he recommends three things. So journaling, and that's been shown through a lot of literature. Um, you know, journaling your thoughts and your feelings about what it not just feels like when you're having maybe a bad day, but when you're having a good day. So that, that writing down maybe solidifies what it feels like and what was happening that day when you were having a good day. Um, and hopefully that repetitive nature of journaling, it starts to almost be self-fulfilling prophecy. Before I go to the second one, what made me also prompt to do this mental game today was that there was something released in the last couple of weeks, and this is not a surprise to me, that there's been a 34% increase in the number of prescriptions 
for anti-anxiety medications. So that's just a reflection of what we're all going through. And this is one way to sort of address that. Medications are absolutely important as well, um, but it's sort of half the story. The second thing that our friend recommends is, um, and what has been shown to be very helpful for mental uh, stability and working on our mental game is relaxation exercises and breathing exercises. Headspace is a great app that I recommend to a lot of my patients. It is also being uh, it is available free for healthcare providers and those on the front line. Um, I also, we, my uh, one of my patients is also uh, trained in something called IRES, which is a meditation technique. We will be having a second, our second or our third go round of that meditation, guided meditation in a couple of weeks. But find some method to work on active breathing techniques, relaxation meditation techniques. And the last one, which I love, and it makes a lot of sense again for his field of pitching, but visual imagery. And I think this is great. I think imagining what it feels like, looks like, um, sounds like when we have you know, maybe are starting to go back into our normal lives. It will look different, but what's that going to feel like to see some of your friends for the first time? What's that going to sound like? Um, and allowing yourself to live in that moment of, of really trying to imagine and visualize. Um, for me, it's visualizing that drop off line at school and how excited I'm going to be to open the sliding door to my van and close it with no children inside. That is a really nice visual imagery for me and it keeps me going. But what does that look like? What does that sound like? What does that feel like? To maybe um, see a friend or a family member for the first time in, a few, in several weeks um, in person, to maybe go to church for the first time. Um, those things really help. I think visual imagery. I love this, these exercises. I thank our friend Jeffrey Supon for giving us these ideas. Um, and we're here for you. I do not believe anybody should suffer alone, so please reach out 818-600-2426 if you are having any mental health issues surrounding this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I'm always free to talk. Um, and we aren't alone. We're all in this together. None of us are going to be behind any sort of eight ball because there is no, um, nobody's speeding ahead. We've all been forced to press pause. And I hope that there will be some lessons um, that we learn that are good out of these, things that we may not have had the opportunity to learn or to understand before. Um, thank you so much. Have a beautiful weekend. Take care of yourself. Thank you.